so we started our operation on the 29th of December. It was supposed to be a four day PB operation uh, out to the east of Camp Leatherneck in an area that we previously identified as uh, highly influenced by Taliban fighters. So the 29th, we conducted our vehicle movement out in that general area. Knowing that we're uh, being here at the late part of the war and understanding the uh, the intent of both the President of Afghanistan as well as the ISAF commanders and all commanders above, um, the understanding of we have to respect the Afghan way of life. And so part of that is having them assim uh, us assimilated into their life. With that, our mission is to disrupt the enemy in the insurgents' way of life. And so that means that we got to go there, we got to make friends with the local populace. And so what we've done is we have adapted by by conducting a patrol base operation, us going out there, which I don't think the insurgents have seen in a while, uh, but we decided uh, part of the, the planning was to live amongst them and have the insurgents disrupted by simply saying, hey, this is a different look. But, uh, we ended up starting to establish our patrol base, setting up some uh, barricades, concertina wire out in the roads just to limit vehicle traffic along the roads while we were going to be staying there over the four days. And uh, when we started to actually construct some of our defensive barricades, we uh, started to receive some enemy machine gun and sniper fire about a thousand meters off to the east. Uh, so we were out there the following day, the 30th, uh, receiving the same harassing fire we received on the 29th all day. Uh, we ended up linking up with 1st Platoon Alpha Section with uh, Sergeant Early and Lieutenant Grissom and we pushed a pretty large uh, dismounted patrol off to the east just to kind of limit the enemy's firing capabilities onto the patrol base from the east. Uh, heavily engaged the entire time we were pushing out towards them. Uh, had to cross a pretty large field to continue all the way out to the east to get to the compounds they were actually firing at us from. And that's when I got on the radio with Lieutenant Grissom and uh, had him roll his section uh, in between us and the next compound that we had to get to so that we could safely bound towards the uh, firing positions that the enemy were using. Uh, once we got up to those compounds that the enemy were using as firing positions, they just continued to bound uh, all the way down to the south, trying to keep an 800 meter gap between their firing positions and our trucks. Uh, and we basically just pushed them out of the area so that they didn't engage the PB for the rest of the uh, 30th. All right, we set up a patrol base. It was right off Route 1, pushed about four clicks in south. Uh, then we started taking fires yesterday. Uh, there's been a couple known target points that are all along this compound section. And then we pushed east, took fires bounding here. Finally, we're here. And then uh, now we're just holding here for uh, two Two of our men went with the interpreter to talk to the people who have a suspected firing position up here. As snipers and all the dismounts at the compound of interest were trying to mount back up into their vehicles so they could retrograde back to uh, Camp Leatherneck, they ended up starting to receive high volumes of machine gun fire from approximately a thousand meters off to the west, uh, at which point most of my trucks uh, were able to establish bid and return fire with their crew served weapons, uh, throwing smoke screens on the deck so that we could safely get people back in the vehicles. And uh, once both sections were accounted for, we conducted our movement back up to uh, Camp Leatherneck and returned to friendly lines. <laughs>